Hi there, it's Leslie, and it's a lovely Sunday afternoon, and I've been working on a project, and I don't know why I didn't turn on my camera to film it. So, as I have two left to do, I'm going to turn, turn on my camera to show you what I'm doing. Um, I started out with a 12 by 12 piece of um, striped paper, hence you see the stripes. I cut it in half so it was now 6 by 12 and then I made a template. And this bottom edge here is 1 inch. This is my template. It's two pieces glued together so it's good and sturdy. And then I took a piece of bamboo and I put a split in it. But before that, what I'm doing is I'm making paper beads. I should have told you that before. I was rolling them on this it's a number three knitting needle and I use this pony bead and some masking tape as my guide just to um, so I can keep things flush but the problem was is that this is really hard um, on my hands and on my fingers I don't know why <laughs> but it was so I came up with this idea and by the way I like I said I cut them and then I took some um, light green um, chalk and did the edges so those had some color and they weren't white I'm gonna stick this in here yeah I'm gonna try and zoom you in I don't have everything set up for um, taping today but you know I'll zoom you in a little bit there so as you can see I'm going to line this up so it's flush with the edge and I'm going to hold the end down a little bit here so it doesn't fly up. Press it in the middle. Keep pressing. Make sure this end stays shut here because that's got your end piece in it. And we can see that. Now I'm just going to roll it. I have been watching YouTube videos all weekend and relaxing. I've been watching videos on how to make um, paper beads because I want to add beads. I want to add, you know, chunky charms and beads and stuff to my journals. And I did go out and buy some glass beads, but man, I'll tell you what, those suckers are expensive. All right, so now I'm just going to take some um, quick dry glue and get it out. Jeez. All right, and I'm just going to roll that end and then kind of roll the glue over it with my finger too, just to seal that down real good. I'll pull that puppy off. And it's sticking up a little bit there, so I'm going to trim that there, and I'm going to trim that there, just so it's kind of even. And then I want to try this to make sure it's going to fit. This is just a standard um, kind of small eyelet, but it's going to sit on the end like that. I'm going to glue it in so it doesn't fall out like that. So that's going on here. As you can see, yes, I've been busy. These ones in the back row, I've already kind of um, put a glaze on it. I was looking for the um, Americana um, decoupage glitter, but I couldn't find it So um, at the store. So I picked up this Ceramico Delta Creative Sparkle Glaze. So I'm going to, that's what I did to these. And I don't know if you can tell or not that they've got just a little bit of sparkle to them. And then what I'm going to do, um, after I get this last one rolled and I get these all done with the sparkle, then I'm going to roll them in, um, I'm going to do uh, the uh, 
the clear UT and I did some last night and I'll show those to you. They turned out really cool. This is when I was playing just trying to see. See how those, I just, those are eyelets. I just glued them in. So this is, you know, the ones that are not triangles. They're just a, uh, a straight strip of paper. But I mean, they're they're not sticky. They're they're pretty cool. Um, they're a little bit lumpy, but that's all right. I wanted them that way. Boy, you know it would be really cool is if I put some crackle on some of these. Maybe when I do the next batch. But um, yeah, so these are ready to be um, put into um, chunky charms for my journals. So I'll put those over here. I'm going to roll this last one up here. It was a lot of fun trying to get this skewer to split a little bit without chopping my finger off. That would not have been good. So there we go. So anyway, I'm <laughs> I've got so many videos to edit. I've got mixed media morsels I've done. I've got happy mail. I've got um I made a folio for my um because I want to make homemade washi tape. So I stole an idea from Shannon Green and I made this really cool um, folio. Where is it? I'll give you a sneak peek of it. There. That's all you're going to see. <laughs> but it turned out really well. Anyway, so I've got that video to edit. So I've got a lot, you know, to upload, but my gosh, the editing just kind of takes a while for me. All right, I'm going to pull that out, even up my ends. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I got my hands full of sticky stuff. I've got such a mess going on here. All right. Now, what do I want? I want the lid on this. Done with that. Okay, and now I'm going to I'm going to move you out. I'm going to move y'all back a little bit. And as I put the uh, sparkle glaze on these, I'll go ahead and just put some music on for your listening pleasure because this is oh so much fun to watch. I'm sure. So enjoy the music while I glaze away.
Okay. I've got yuck all over my... There goes my dog. You know, I can't make a video without <laughs> Sophie <laughs> barking at... I don't know. It could be like something just blew across the yard. You know? That's all right. She keeps me safe. That's all that matters. Besides the fact that I love her to death. Um, all right. So I'm going to let these dry. It shouldn't take them too long. And then I am going to um, come back and after they dry, um, I'm going to do them in the UT. And uh, they'll be, and then I'll glue in the top things. So then they'll be nice and pretty like these, only they're a different shape. See? Aren't they pretty? pretty okay, pretty. I'm back. And these have dried. And it's funny, I was kind of looking at these. There's a difference. Oh, first of all, this is just um, one of those floral, real soft floral thing, greenery things. So the toothpicks fit fit nicely in there to make a drying rack. If I really want to get fancy, I could probably do them on the sides and this way too. So I could, I could dry all the way around if I got real crazy and made like a hundred beads in one night. But this one and this one, let me show you the difference. This one here, I did not, um, put any chalk on the edge of the triangle before I rolled it. This one I did. It's the exact same paper. Yet look at the difference. You see? And you can see the sparkle from the glaze too that turned out kind of nice. But this one looks a little bit more vintage than this one. Which I like. I'm all, you know, I'm all, if you know me, I'm all about the vintage stuff. I like it a lot. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the clear beauty, which is ultra thick embossing powder. So to do that, what we're going to need, I got the sniffles. I'm sorry. I was just uh, downstairs eating dinner <clears throat> and all the windows and everything are open because it's gorgeous out and everybody has mowed their lawns and the farmer behind us has not um, done anything because I think they're going to build houses back there so the goldenrod is in full bloom which means my allergies are going to kill me. Alright so what I have here is I have um, Versamark watermark, um, pad, my watermark pad right here. I've got my UD. Let's see if I move this back a little bit. Maybe you can see a little bit better. I'm going to need to flip this cap back on though in between. Can you set that up there so you can see it? All right. So what I'm, you're not going to really care seeing this, the beads come off the toothpicks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, these pair of tweezers here. I'm going to stick them in the hole so they're not moving anywhere. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to roll it really good onto the pad. And then I'm just going to pour this onto there. And give it a tap. I'm going to throw the lid over this real quick. And I'm going to take my heat gun. And I, you know what? I'm going to move you in because I'm hoping you can see it change. For those of you who have never seen that before, okay, 
This is really, man, that is super close. Excuse the noise. Okay, now and while it's still um, while it's still kind of wet, I'm gonna drop some more on here. And I'm gonna do it one more time. I hope that was in view, but can you see how that's now very, uh, that'll be like a glass bead when it cools down. All right, let me move you back out. <clears throat> all right, now I'm going to go through and do that to all 30 of these. I had a toothpick here. And then what I'm going to do then is, while I wait for this to dry, or actually not dry, but cool down, just like that, drop it on. And actually, to be honest with you, you know what? It's almost completely, it's warm. It's not hot anymore. And it's, it's all smooth. All right, well, I'm going to go through and do that to all 30 of these, which I'm sure you just want to watch me do that, don't you? I'll spare you. I'm going to go ahead and get all 30 of these done, and then we're going to um, come back and glue the caps on. So um, I'll see you in a few. Hi there. I'm back. And I got these all done, and it's the next day because I had to go to bed before I could finish filming. You know, Sunday night's considered a work night for me. So, anyway, it's Monday. It's the next day. These are all done. See how shiny they are? Can you see that? Ah. They're nice and hard, too. You can't move them. can't bend them. They're like glass. I mean, you can't even feel... Get back here. There's no escaping. You can't even feel any of the ridges. So, you know, when you use the UT, the ultra-thick emboss ultra embossing powder, it really um, it protects it. Um, these are paper, so I wouldn't necessarily say they're going to be 100% waterproof. But um, I think if you got, you know, if you strung these like on a necklace or I mean like on a bracelet or something, I don't think you're going to run the risk too much of, um, of them falling apart. But, you know, like if you jumped in a pool and went swimming, well, I'm not going to guarantee these aren't going to get, you know, somewhat warped, but at least the UT gives them shape and, and, um, so I guess that they do got, did, if they do got wet, <laughs> if they did get wet, they would, um, maintain their shape, I guess. All right. So what I'm going to do now, moving on is we're going to, um, glue on our eyelets on our ends. And once again, I'm apologizing for the wind. I don't know why they call Chicago the Windy City when really, I'm telling you, Indianapolis is windy. Um, I'm going to bring you in, let you see what I'm doing here. I don't think you really care whether or not you see the, um, 
See, we put them on the toothpicks to dry. And once again, these are just, you know, the small eyelets. So I'm going to start by just kind of putting it there. And I think I'm going to put a little bit around the edge because some of these holes are big. And then I need a toothpick. Where did my toothpicks go? And then I'm going to take a toothpick. You can see there's like glue there. I'm just going to poke that hole in there. I'm just going to poke it. Kind of wipe off the top. All right, so then I'm just going to hold that. I want to hold that. And just kind of let that set up and dry. I mean, they're not perfect, but I don't want them to be perfect. Get in there, you son of a gun. So I'm just going to let that set up. This is quick dry, so it should dry quick. <laughs> I bet you if I turned it over, it won't fall out. A girl can hope. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Set that down for a second. Pick up my eyelet. Give it a little glue. And then I'm going to do the other side. Get on there. One thing I'm going to do, I'm going to keep a wipe here just to uh, keep my fingers as clean as I can. And then, just like with the other one, I'm going to poke it. And just kind of wipe it a little bit. says that the glue, if there's any glue that does seep out, it does dry clear. So I'm not overly concerned about that. So there we go. And it's ready to be strong after it dries, of course. And there's my finished bead. I'm back. We're experimenting. I think I figured out what it is we need to do. I think we need to do one eyelet at a time. Let it dry. And then flip it over. And get the other eyelet. So, what I've done here, besides make my hands a sticky mess, got one eyelet on here. Put it in my foam core right here. And I'm just going to let that dry. Now, this is tacky glue, quick dry glue. So that'll dry fast.
I guess the key is to be patient. And I'm not always real patient. So, all right, I'm going to finish gluing on these tops and then I'll be back and we'll glue on the bottoms and hopefully it'll be a lot easier. And I won't have to swear so much, or at least in my head swear so much. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I have these separated into two different piles because the ones that are over there have kind of like a, um, a bluish color um, eyelet. I didn't want to mix them up too much. So I'm going to go ahead and start with these and then finish with the other ones. But as you can see, these dry it on here real nice. I mean, they're not perfect, but that's kind of what makes it um, really cool about these is that they're not perfect. They're, um, you know, they're handmade beads. And uh, I'm not going for perfection on here. And considering these are the first beads I ever made, you know, I didn't do too bad. I mean, here's one over here that's completely finished, both top and bottom, ready to be strung. And once again, I start to videotape and my dog starts barking. My dog starts barking. Always. All right, so I'm going to move these over here. It's a beautiful day out. Actually, I should say a beautiful evening out. And um, the dog, I think, is barking at the kids out playing. I just kind of give that a little bit of a blow. And then I'm going to stick it on the... Uh, I can get it on here. Jeez. Maybe I need to do this the other direction. See, I always have trouble with the sticks. Which I hope is in, not an indication of... Ooh, it may be an indication that it's going to be hard to uh, string these because they're not perfect. Yeah. I can see through it. You know what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to have to do, is probably, hmm, how am I going to do this? Because they're not perfect. Hmm. A pin. Oh my gosh, I swear, it's dog barking heaven here. If it's not my Sophie, it's someone else. All right, I'm not going to use toothpicks. I'm going to use pin. I'm going to use my pins. That works. So anyway, I'm just going to go through and get these in here. And if you're wondering why I'm blowing like that, it's because I'm blowing the glue that's blocking the opening. Get on there. So I'm going to have to hold it a minute. Try to make sure my hands aren't too sticky. And what I'm probably going to do though is let these dry overnight to make sure that glue gets a real good seal on there. 
and then they'll be done. So which means I probably won't get this video finished until tomorrow now. This one is not working. Well, you know, this is how you learn, right? Trial and error. Put a little bit more glue in there. A little bit. Huh. There's no such thing as a little bit with me on anything, it seems. Alright, so I'm just going to hold it and let it set. So I'm going to go through and do that with all of these, including the ones that have the blue, the blue tip. And then when I'm done gluing all of these on and they're all set, then I will come back and show them to you. So I'll be back. All right, hi there. I now have the um, eyelets glued on both the top and the bottom, and um, I'm using pins instead instead of toothpicks, just so that the extra glue that's on the inside um, it was catching on the toothpicks. So I found it easier to let them dry on um, these pins. I think these are quilter pins. I'm not sure I've had them for years. But anyway, I'm going to let these dry overnight and then I will pull them off. And so when I get home from work tomorrow, we will pull these puppies off and take a look at them. Aren't they gorgeous? Absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait for them to finish drying. So anyway, I'll be back. Um, for you, it'll be a snap. For me, it'll be about 12 hours because I need to go teach school. So y'all have a great night and I'll be back in a jiffy. Well, hello there. I am done with my next day of school. It's been overnight. These are all nice and dry. Can you hear them rattle? All right. I'm going to take these off their pins. Oh my gosh. They're gorgeous. I'm going to have to separate these pins from my regular stack of pins because some of them have a little bit of glue on them. But boy, these sure turned out nice. Here they are. They're all done. Whoa! So using just a 12 by 12 piece of paper, I was able to make all these beads. And actually the ones that are in here too. So a 12 by 12 piece, <laughs> they're running away. A 12 by 12 piece of paper made all these beads. So I'm, um, and you know, it's funny is even though you use the same paper, each one is different. There are no two the same. And it's funny is that now that I've had the, um, the UT on it and everything else, I really can't tell the difference now. Well, maybe a little bit between the ones that had the green chalk on the edges. Well, I guess I can with this one. Between the ones that had the green chalk and the ones that did not. This one did not. This one did. So this one looks a little brighter. 
This one looks a little bit more vintage, which that's right up my alley anyway. Y'all know that. So, wow, look at how cool these turned out. I may play with these some more um, and put some other beads and wire and stuff on it. Um, I don't know. I may just leave them be as they are. Um, but, hey, you know what? This is my first try at making beads, and look at how awesome they turned out. They turned out absolutely fabulous. And these will be great <laughs> on Chunky Charms um, to go on my on my journals. And that was the whole purpose behind making these. Because when I went out to see how much beads cost, I was floored. I'm like, I am not paying that. I could spend that money doing other things. I am not paying that kind of money. I love this round one. It's not quite round. It's a little bit not round on the edges here. But that one is just, I think, a gorgeous bead. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And, you know, the thing that inspired me to start doing the beads, to try it, was a creative artist collab. Let's say that again. The creatist, creative artist collaboration which um, I was so honored to be asked to, um, to be a part of. And um, Stacy um, recommended me and I was accepted. So I'm thrilled. And this was one of the collaborations they did where it was um, this month was Trash to Treasure. And a lot of girls made bees. And I'm like, man, I can do that. I think I can do that. Let's give it a try. And it really turned out great. I'm really happy with it. And um, so I hope you give this a try. It's um, really not that difficult. And um, it's a lot of fun. And you make something really beautiful that you can use as an embellishment, whether it's, you know, um, on a journal or if you make these smaller, you can put them, you know, in your in your books, your scrapbooks and whatnot. Um but you know what? Give it a try. But thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you learned something. I hope it inspired you to be creative, to make something, um, to make anything, to do anything. But thank you so much. I appreciate it. I hope you all have a really great rest of your day. And um, uh, go out there and give somebody love a hug. Thanks. Bye-bye.